Okay, hello everybody, Bullsayer here, and welcome back to another episode of Tutorial Survival. Last episode, we ended up taking a spurt mayday for ourselves, and if we look in my cargo container, my cargo inventory here, you can see that I managed to scrap all of that stuff from that grid, which means this episode, I think we're going to go ahead and put into... I'm going to go ahead and take some steel plates here. And we're going to build ourselves a another mining ship. Now, I went ahead and moved the ship closer to a, a batch of asteroids here. Um, okay, game save. We can see that we have some iron here. As well as, I think there was some ice on these asteroids, too. And there's a spurt freight over there, but we're not going to mess with that this episode. Yeah, so we got some we got some ice here. We need to fill up uh, our ice. We need to replenish our tanks on our ship here. And also, apparently, I still haven't built one of you. Okay. But anyway... So we're going to be dealing with ship printers. Now, a ship printer is essentially, this is a advanced build. Uh, this one's really not that advanced. This is actually a kind of simple one. Uh, they do get, some people do get them super overcomplicated. Like the welders have like, you know, things that actuate and move them to be more precise and getting to the nit and gritty areas of ships to weld them up. This is, this should be all that we need for this. Now, as we can see, I have a projector block here and we have a merge block. Now I could project a minor ship onto this, but I don't have any designs that actually work in space. I don't think I do. Of course, now that I say that, I got a uh, F10. Do I? Don't think I do. No, I do not. Every Just about everything I have made recently is for planets. Okay, so we're going to have to do this manually. I have to swap out my tools real quick. Okay. So we'll put our drill away. Those like that. Don't really need the hydrogen bottle per se. Um, do have to be mindful. Uh, and sometimes NPCs will get fairly close, and uh, if they get within, like, I think it's three to 2,000 meters, they'll spawn drones. So actually what I should do real quick before I forget is I should go to our turrets on, on, on. That way, in case anything actually comes near us, the ship will deal with it automatically. Yay, Sybil. Okay, so I'm using merge blocks here. Now, hopefully, just to kind of test the range of these welders, I have this merge block placed. Now, if I walk over here, Okay, that's what I thought. So I have to actually weld some of these up by hand because the welders are kind of finicky. Oh, wait, I can just interact. I keep forgetting I have the cargo container right here that I can interact with. So I think it's 
computers, construction components. Okay, so motor and steel tube. to do is I want because this thing is going to be powered by let's see this thing is going to be powered by hydrogen so what I sort of want to do with this ship is I want to have it so that I can actually refill that oxygen or that hydrogen on the fly. Uh, I am making this up as I go along so if I go quiet I, I'm not actively ignoring you guys I'm just trying to actually concentrate on what I'm doing here. So what I think I want to do is I want to do a series of cargo containers in the center. We're going to use medium ones, not going to do big ones. Just out of curiosity, well, it actually well does. So, see, that's the advantage of a printer is that I don't have to load up a bunch of stuff in my inventory. I just press the button and boom, 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 boom. Okay? So now that we have that, it just makes it so much easier trying to build this thing as I go along. Okay, so I know that I need to have a connector on the bottom because that's how our ship's going to drop off stuff. And then I need to have a converter piece there so that I can have our ship front That. We're going to have little tanks. Six ought to be good. Real quick note, whenever you see the red lights on these, don't walk towards them. They will hurt you. Okay, so now we have all that. So now I need to get our thrusters.
the sun from freaking out there. Okay, so what I want to do That went the wrong. Hopefully that doesn't clang. And the cool thing is because the ship's attached to the main grid here, I can just hop in the ship and it immediately has power. I'm not going to sit there. I'm not going to say that I, forget, I, I lost track of my power, but I may have been ignoring that. Cool, so that's, whoa, I don't want to get close to those. I literally just warned everybody about that. So now I need to do batteries for this. And we'll come to the front of the ship here, and let's go ahead and give you a top docking connector as well. And let's not forget our neat little gyro guy. I think we only need one because this thing's not going to get that heavy. And then and then again, because you know we like protecting our ships.
I actually queued that up in the wrong assembler, but that's okay. Oh, am I seriously missing one? I think I can put those two away. I can grab my drill because I have to go get some ice. Some ice. And now we can unleash the ship. Minor batteries. And uh, also I noticed that that gyro did not get fully built. What are you missing? And why did you not get included? back on.
Now, of course, the problem is, is that we are going to be using our hydrogen at a really bad rate. So in order to, so what we can do now actually is we can take the ship and we can convert to station and that will actually help. Because now our, our gyro or our thrusters are not fighting to keep the ship together or in one spot. And because we're in space, we don't have to worry about our sh this little ship's batteries as much. So now we can actually go over to this asteroid here. And we almost instantaneously filled up. Cargo containers, so we're filling up cargo containers. Okay. So that's good. We can back out slowly. Uh, again, with flying ships around asteroids and stuff, you want to be really careful that you're not accidentally backing up and smashing into the asteroid. Now we are a little bit more weighty now that we have all that ice. That's fine. Because we're going to dump all this ice into our large ship and it's going to help kind of stay off hopefully burning all of that hydrogen I do have to be careful about the hydrogen on this little ship though
In fact, something you can do real quick, if, if you want to make sure that you have your small ship able to do stuff, you can do, where is the small hydrogen tank? And our fuel. And as we can see, we are stockpiling that. And what you do is you go to groups and go stockpile on and off. That way our little guy is always filled. Uh, our ship, we don't really need to worry about the hydrogen on the ship per se because it's locked as a station grid which is actually a smart tactic that you want to do with your large ships if you're not moving them around. Just go ahead and swap them over to stations. Uh, it makes performance on the game a bit easier too, but it also makes it so that if anything bumps your ship, if it runs out of hydrogen, it's not going to go floating off into space. So as we can see, we got these two engines running. I don't like relying on those. I really don't because they eat ox. They eat hydrogen. But we only have these six little batteries here and fully recharged in two hours. And that's with these batteries fully recharged in two hours. These are the minor batteries. So that's basically going to be it for this episode because there's really not a whole lot else I can do until after these batteries recharge. Uh, so I want to thank everybody for watching. Well, actually, no, re real quick, before I end the video, let's do a recap off of, off of the, uh, sh ship welder. Recap that, just make sure I got that all covered. Okay, so this miner did not take us that long to build because we have a ship builder in our hangar bay, which allows us to either project projections that will fit within this, or we can actually manually build a ship off of this little extender here. And then all you have to do is hit a button, and because these welders are piped directly into the inventory, they pull everything and they build the ship for you so that you're not constantly running back and forth welding things up. So that's just a quicker way to build ships on the go when you're on a ship like this. It's always a good idea to consider something like this. It's extremely useful, but yeah. So now we have our little, uh, our little miner ship. It's not anything to look at, but it's enough to go get ice and keep our ice stores up because we're, again, because we're a station, we don't have to worry about the ship flooding off if we do run out of hydrogen but we have the ability to go get more. So I'm going to leave it there. Thank you guys for watching. Be sure to click that subscribe button and uh, also click the like button if, if you feel inclined. It just it lets YouTube know that I'm doing something actually worth watching so that hopefully more people can find this useful later. Just saying. But anyway... Later, everybody. I'll see you all in the next video.